Hey, it's Grady at Twin Creek Audio back in the studio today. And today I'm going to talk about turning your DAW, your digital audio workstation, into a tape machine. However, the fact of the matter is your digital audio workstation is already a tape machine. In the early days of digital audio, you had the DASH format, digital audio stationary head, that recorded digital audio onto tape. Same thing with Alesis ADATs and Tascam DA88s, the modular digital multi-track formats that were popular in the 90s. Those are tape machines. They just recorded digital audio instead of analog audio. So your modern day DAW software is basically already a tape machine. And it's one with very powerful editing capabilities as well as great calibration. On an analog tape machine, you've got calibrations for each of the channels on that multi-track tape machine. Input, record level, and then whatever the playback level from the repro head is. So your digital audio workstation can do the same thing. If you've got a track in the DAW and you're sending it out through your digital audio interface out into the analog world, you can simply boost the output level by raising the fader in the DAW. And that sends a hotter signal to the analog output of your interface and into your mixing console or your other analog gear. So in this sense, I'm talking about using your digital audio workstation as a tape machine by interfacing it with other analog gear. So we're really talking about using the DAW as a tape machine connected to all of the other analog gear in the studio. Very similar to a setup that you would have had in the 90s with you know, two or three ADATs synced together or Tascam DA88s, and those are interfaced with analog mixing consoles and analog outboard gear. You can do the exact same thing with your digital audio workstation software and a good audio interface. A lot of people refer to this as hybrid, a hybrid setup. I think it's hybrid, analog hybrid, using the DAW as a tape machine. It's all kind of the same thing, but it accomplishes a lot of different things and it's a great setup depending on what kind of workflow you like. I prefer the older style workflow of the analog mixing console and outboard gear because that's how I originally learned how to do this. And to me, it sounds a little bit better or it takes me less work to get there sound wise than when I'm mixing in the box. I do think digital audio workstations when you're mixing in the box sound really, really good. And I love a lot of the plugins. I think they sound great. There's just those of us out there that like using this analog gear. And yes, you can use your digital audio workstation in combination with an analog console and your outboard gear, just like you would have used a digital tape machine or an analog tape machine back in the day. If you want to take it to the next degree and really turn your digital audio workstation into a tape machine, you can interface your digital audio workstation software and your digital audio interface with a console and then use analog outboard gear in conjunction with the console. However, you can also do something like add a tape plugin in your digital audio workstation software. And with a tape plugin, you get a lot of different settings and things. You can have one tape sound set up for the drums and a different one for bass, different one for guitar, none on vocals. You can do any combination of that tape saturation sound versus non tape saturated sound on your tracks and then you're individually sending those tracks out through your console to mix them and you can process them partially in the box, partially out of the box. Hybrid mixing is what people have come to call this and it's my favorite way to work. The only issue with working this way out of the box is recallability. With the DAW, you don't have to worry about recall. You've got a save button, you open that project. As long as everything is in the box, everything's there, the settings are exactly the same. With the hybrid analog world, you can't do that. But then again, nowadays everybody has a camera on their phone in their pocket and it's not really that difficult to take pictures of the settings of your EQs and things on the console and your outboard gear and put that in the file with the track sheet for that song. So there are ways to get around that too. It just takes a little bit longer. Now, personally, I absolutely love tape machines, but tape machines have become very expensive, especially even, even your semi-professional formats, like some of your old Tascam and Fostex machines, go for really expensive prices, in my opinion. And then you've got tape stock, which the price of that sky high these days to buy tape. So using real analog tape these days is just not all that practical. 
but you can use your digital audio workstation like it's a tape machine if you have an analog console and some outboard gear and you like that workflow better. In my last video, I talked a lot about how to set up to do hybrid mixing or analog style mixing. So make sure to check out that video. It's the last one here on the channel and I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one and in the video description. I'm gonna show a couple of examples of how I use my DAW, which is Reaper, like a tape machine. This is a pretty simple track right here. We've got kick snare hat, three toms, and we've got a mid side configuration for the overhead mics. That's why we've got one of these side here phase flipped. And you can see these are mostly in the center. I compensated for lower levels on a couple of these by pushing the fader up just slightly. But basically I've just got all my faders right near zero and then all of my channels, all my tracks are assigned. Each track is being sent to an individual output on the audio interface. And again, check out my last video about setting up to mix with your DAW through a console. And I show a little bit more detail on this, but you can see this pretty easily here. Each of these tracks is sent to a separate output on the audio interface and then I can basically calibrate this tape machine here by pushing these faders up and down. So if I have a kick drum that's recorded at a lower level than I'd like, I can boost the output to that channel of the audio interface going into the console or outboard gear, whatever analog gear, I can boost that just by pushing the fader up. In the pushing, if you want to push it beyond that, you can emulate tape with a tape plugin, and you can still send each of these individual tape plugin, tape plugin. I don't know how we'd say that, but the tracks with the tape plugin, you can send those to an individual audio interface output and into your analog console. So that's really cool too. So this is probably my favorite tape plugin. It's the Soft Tube Tape plugin on things like drums. I like this B setting. It has a, a very saturated sound with a lot of low end, kind of a lot of beefiness to it. So I like that. I'll usually pull this amount down to three and a half, four, not leave it right in the center, probably about there. And this is kick drum, for example, and then snare drum. I can just copy that over here if I want to. So I can put a tape plug in with a different setting on every track in the project. So I'm basically using my DAW as a tape machine. I'm using a tape plug-in on the track itself and then sending that track out an individual output from the interface into an analog console or an, you know summing box or whatever you've got. In this sense, you know, the way I use it is with an analog console. So I'm looking at this like this is my tape machine. I can have more of a tape sound. I can calibrate my output levels going into the console tape return inputs. So if I want to drive the console harder, I can just raise the fader here. So it's really cool. It's a great way to mix hybrid through an analog console. You can use your DAW as a tape machine. So I can even have a combination of different tape sounds on the individual tracks. On kick and snare, I have the soft tube tape plug in set to the B setting with amount set to four on kick and snare. But on guitar, I've got the slate virtual tape machine set to FG9 at 30 ips and you know I can use this I'd probably make that 15 inches per second instead of 30 and I usually will use the 2 inch 16 track setting on this one uh, this one this is a good tape plug-in too but again I can use a combination of different tape plugins or any other kind of plugins I want right here inside my tape machine here I am at the console to do a demonstration of using the DAW like a tape machine. So in this case, I've got a pretty simple setup. I've got 13 tracks here in the DAW, and each of those tracks is being sent through a separate interface output and into one of the tape returns here on the console. So we've got kick, snare, hi-hat, tom one, two, floor tom, this is a mid side setup that I had on overhead. So this is the mid mic and this is uh, left and right side. So this is the same mic. If you know anything about a mid side setup, these are a duplicate of the same thing. 
one of them stays flipped and I did that here on the console. Bass guitar and then I've got three electric guitars. This is the main electric guitar. This one's got a really kind of a out of phase strat sound and it's uh, punctuating a lot of things. And this is a more heavily overdriven guitar right here. So it's a pretty simple setup. This is just to demonstrate. I have a tape plug-in. I have the soft tube tape plug-in on everything except for the three guitars and on the three guitars I have the Slate virtual tape machine. I'm showing settings of those in Windows while I'm talking. So I want you to hear this. There are no other plugins. I'm not using anything in the analog domain right now except the Yuri LA-10 on the bass guitar track. There's no compression. These faders aren't doing anything. Those are the channel faders and those are for a different purpose because I was tracking drums for the new Homespun Centaurs album. I'll have some videos coming up about the new Homespun Centaurs album, but that's what these faders are. You could ignore those. We're just mixing here from the DAW with tape plugins. Let's hear what that sounds like. So in this sense, I used the DAW as my tape machine with tape plugins on everything. Two different flavors of tape plugins, and the settings are slightly different, and it sounds really cool. So a combination of the DAW with some tape plugins and an analog console, you really start to get that analog sound that everybody craves. Yay! So I hope you found this informative and interesting. I appreciate all the new subscribers. I appreciate everyone watching these videos. I'm going to continue to make new videos here on the channel. 
I try to release at least one video, if not two videos a week. So make sure you like this video and click the subscribe button to subscribe to the Twin Creek Audio YouTube channel if you have not done so already. As usual, I hope everyone out there has a wonderful and excellent day, night, evening, weekend, weekday, hour, minute, second, nanosecond. Whatever it is you're having, have a good one. Thanks so much for watching.